Hello and welcome back to Hofbergman. So it's still the same date as what the last episode was in, uh, but I just want to quickly check these eggs. Everything still seems the same there, so we'll just leave them to it. Um, in the last episode we did the wood shavings. Now, I've been looking again at the wood shavings, thinking about it, and how much of a, you know, a good idea it could be. Um, and there is probably two different ways to go in about it. You obviously can get the bedding like that, and you can store it here, or you can get it as a loose and buy it like we did in the sawmill or the carpentry place or the carpenter um, and have it loose like that. So I have stored what we were doing in the last episode. The, the load that I got basically um, I have unloaded in here and I think it will be good to just access it when, if and when we need it because uh, you never know at some point we'll probably get some horses and try out that and uh, learn, learn what we're doing on that as well. Uh, but what also I thought was pretty cool is I'm obviously used to playing with seasons so with seasons you have to feed your animals every day you have to obviously give them water if they need it every day and the same with like mucking out and all that kind of stuff so with without seasons obviously it's a little bit different so you'll notice that the feed doesn't go down as quick so you don't really need to put, give them feed every day um, same with all the animals basically so all the stuff you don't they don't consume it straight away hence why maybe having a bucket with um, a wheelbarrow with the 250 originally before I modified it wasn't too bad because you could just keep topping it up um, but obviously when you initially fill it up it is um, yeah a little bit laboursome let's say so we need to keep that in mind going forward because um, having the sacks it's not actually too much of an issue and also this place here is actually really cool because you can pop that up there open the door and then you go up these ladders and you can see that I've stored the sacks of uh, the um, where is it now the uh, wood shavings. So you can also put corn sacks up here, I guess, to feed the chickens. Same with barley, wheat, um, and then obviously I've got the wood, wood shavings. So all the types that you can basically use to feed the chickens, you can store up there um, and their bedding. So we have got some sacks. So every time it goes down, we can grab a sack, throw it onto this, not a problem. Um, and the same with the feed. Now, obviously, you can get a big bag as well, and we can take the wheelbarrow and load it up that way. Anything works, really. Let's be honest. It's uh, there's so many options there, uh, but what I do think is pretty cool is the fact that now we've got a hell of a lot of grain. We've got 88,000 liters of wheat, 22,000 liters of barley, 86,000 liters of oats, which is really good if we want to get some horses. Um, yeah, so pretty much we are we are set right now. For we could make some chicken feed. We could also make some uh, big bags of the. Uh, wood shavings so instead of making the sacks like we did we could go and use the bagging machine not the bag master I'm going to call that from now on the sack machine because that's technically where you make the sacks then there's two of these there's one on the other farm just over that side well, it's not the other farm it's the other side of this farm um, and then there's this one here so there's two of these now we could put some loose wood shavings in this and just make big bags of it this is the beauty of Hofbergman and the map I could make big bags of chicken feed, pig food, lime, I could even go and sell the lime. Now, previously, um, I actually did my own fertilizer on this in my, in, on uh, an older version of the map. So, and you can still do that now. You can still actually make your own fertilizer. You have to buy the nitrogen, the phosphorus, the potassium, mix it at the right ratio. Um, and then you can obviously make your own solid fertilizer. You can also make your own liquid fertilizer as well. Um, before, previously, it was just to consume, um, but you couldn't sell it. Well, now you can actually sell it because there's a garden center and if you look at the garden center here and you scroll acro across now everything that you can pretty much make um so you can make your own seeds you can now sell there and also your own fertilizer which is a really good price the same with lime and we do own the lime pit so we could go and get a load of lime um, and bag it up if we want to and then go and sell it there there's nothing stopping us from doing that and the same with compost and then I think that's it. Yeah, that is. So pretty much anything you'd expect uh, for gardening. So seeds, fertilizer, lime, that kind of stuff, which is really good to know. So it's an option if you want to make a bit of money, make your own fertilizer, which I will be doing at some point. I will I will show you how to do that at some point when we get we get to it. Um, I do still want to play this like a series as well as going through all the processes at the same time and all the production features, everything it has to offer really. So we will be going over to like the uh, probably the the gardens you know the the vegetable farm over here we'll be doing some of that at some point we'll be doing this distillery stuff we're making our own uh, juices and then obviously wine and stuff like that in the cellar 
going to sell that probably i think we need to make barrels as well now for it as well doing our own gas um making our own fuel as well like over here there's so many things i do want to get to but um i'm not going to rush through it i'm not just going to show it all all at once because i do want to play the game as well and play the series as well and have it as a you know as a proper save game that i enjoy as well so keep that in mind it's not all going to come at once it is going to be stretched out um, in each episode but i do want to show at least something in each episode uh, something that i haven't done before that is the aim hence why these videos are a little bit longer so at some point we will go to the lime pit we will obviously scoop up some of this there's a shed ton absolute shed ton of lime we will go and get this put it into the the bucket obviously and scoop it out either use it to spread so we could just come here fill up the lime spreader um, but I might take some back and actually store it because it makes more sense to have it on the farm so we can access it so I do think it's a good idea to store the lime in that instead of making big bags um, I will be making some big bags soon though I do want to make some chicken feed in big bags um, then we'll probably store it up somewhere so we can access it and just keep putting it on there when we need it because the chickens they do grow quite quick they do uh, reproduce quite quick sorry um, and I think right now if we have a look we've got I think they might have reproduced a little bit so as you can see there's an animal pretty much every 14 hours on the black ducks every 54 hours on the brown brown chicken so every three and a half hours I'm having a new chicken and the ducks are obviously slower so that is a lot that they're gonna grow they're gonna start needing more feed so it is important I start making some big bags soon so we need to keep that in mind big bags will happen might not be in this episode uh, but I will be doing some chicken chicken food uh, big bag soon and I might also go and get a shed load of lime and pump it into that but the only problem with pumping it into that is the only way I can pump it in is by using that and it only holds a small amount. So we might have to obviously do what we did before where we just get the bigger trailer, probably the biggest one we've got actually, and then just tip it and just, just keep it going. It'll take some time but it's, it'll be worth it in the end because we can have easy access to lime. So I'll stop faffing now, I'll stop chit chatting and we'll get to it. So I think the first thing I want to do I just want to get some fuel for the farm. Now, as you can see here, this, this is set to zero. It's also got a little, like, clear glass fill indicator that you've probably seen these on other maps because I have actually seen these on other maps as, like, fuel tanks that are just static, they do nothing. But on this one, it's quite unique. This will actually tell you the volume that's, that's in there. I think there's one similar on Italia but I will be honest I did see it on this map first uh, and this also fills up with a green liquid to show you the like indicate the fuel that's in there and it also is hose connection so you could go and get some fuel we could fill this up as you can see it's already got 400 liters in and that's because I emptied from here this was pretty much these are fuel as well but they that was I had some fuel and that was the only fuel that I had on the farm I think there's also another one in here but if I open the door I'm probably gonna uh, let's try it Yep. So there is another one, is here. So there's 200 litres in that as well. Um, let's shut it again. It's probably going to be a bit difficult to get to now. Uh, but let's let's go and get some fuel. I mean, we don't really need a beefy tractor for this. Definitely didn't want to do that. So I'll park this bit up. We don't need this. Um, it's not going to be a massive volume, but it is going to be enough for us. Because fuel is quite expensive, and we aren't making our own fuel just yet. So we just need something to sit in these two fuel tanks that we've got available on the farm uh, but then eventually we won't be doing that because we'll be making our own uh, from byproducts but we need to obviously start sending some of the stuff I guess first to to these um, to these cell points around the map because yeah I doubt I doubt the uh, gonna be offering anything unless we take something first uh, I might be wrong with that, but I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll go and check on the way because this, if we have a look at it in our owned items, you can tell that it'll tell you exactly what it takes and it's pretty much all liquid types. Milk, goat's milk, even calf milk, I think. So yeah, you've got like, looks like herbicide, some fat, which is obviously where we're going to pick up to make our own fuel. Goat's milk, calf milk, um, fuel, 
different types of fuel there. Quite a lot of stuff really when you think about it. There is a hell of a lot of stuff. So it'll hold all types of liquids. I also want to just quickly say as well, I have actually got Global Company on this map. Now, I did it because I wanted the one, the mod from Global Company that doesn't turn off the tractor when you go for a certain distance, and that's working fine. And I've also gone with the icons, but I've made sure I left out all the production kind of mods, anything that would interfere. And so far, it's working. So I will keep it on, and if I do obviously find any issues, I'll probably remove it. But so far, like I said, it's working a treat. Uh, because I do like some of the, you know, some of the mods that Global Company offer are pretty much, yeah, the, I don't like playing without them basically just because of the fact it does make such a difference and I do like the icons that Global Company offer. Also talking about the straw that's in the field, I am going to bail off that second field, but what I'm going to do with the other two fields is I'm going to pick it up as loose and put it into the uh, storage area for loose straw that we've got just above where the uh, horses are, the horses stables on the farm. I, I did buy, actually, when I was setting up the map and I picked out all my equipment for I obviously set my money to 200 uh, thousand. I did actually buy a loading wagon, but I never picked it up from the shop, so it's still sitting at the shop. Um, so we do need to get that at some point. I might have also driven past it a few times in the last couple of episodes. So I think what we need to do is go to the butcher or the inn, just to see if they have got any anything we can pick up to make our own to make our own fuel. Now I don't think this will work to be honest. Because they're the IBCs. Well, let's just move this out of the way. Now I do know you can obviously pick up from here, but I don't know if it means that you have to take meat first to the actual butcher. I really don't know, but if we open the lid, it might then give us an option to fill. So there's no animal fat. So obviously, we need to, we, yeah, we must have to take animals first to obviously for the butcher to slaughter, and then we can get meat packs. So if you do want to know what the difference between the butcher and the actual uh, slaughterhouse is, basically the butcher, what he'll do is you'll take your cows here, or you'll take your animals here, doesn't matter what kind, and you'll get actual meat packs. And you'll also obviously get the byproduct of the animal fat sitting in here. Um, however, the slaughterhouse, pretty much all you do is you take your animals to slaughter, you get paid a set amount uh, for the weight of the cow, and then, yeah, you don't get anything else. You don't see meat packs or anything. It's just taking your cows to slaughter as if you're a proper farmer. Taking your cows off, you know, they're going to obviously do whatever with the meat. They're going to sell it. They, they pay you for the price of the cow itself in weight. Um, and it does work differently on Hof Bergman. It's not like a cow gets this this much. Um, it, it goes on weight. Per 1,000 kilograms of weight is a set amount. So, obviously, a horse, for example, and a cow get paid more than what a chicken and a duck does. So it's not a set amount. But the same with meat packs now. It never used to be like that, but you'd before you take a chicken and you get like a massive amount of meat packs, the same amount as what you get for a cow. Whereas now that's not the case. Uh, basically what you're going to do is get um, a set amount of meat packs for the, the animal that you've got and the weight that it is. So if you take a cow, you're going to get more. And if you take a horse, you're going to get more. Uh, but we will get into that. Obviously, as the farm that I'm running grows and the young bulls, um, obviously start reproducing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, as, as soon as they start reproducing and we start having a proper herd of, of uh, cows and so on, uh, then yeah, we're going to get all that in action. But right now, we are quite small when it comes to the uh, meat farm, but I do want to up that. I do like the idea of doing that. And I'll be honest, I'm probably going to do more meat packs. I like that route in having my own farm shop, which we have got, and obviously using that and even selling it I think it's a good idea anyway let's uh, get this fuel so we can crack on and do some other things as well so what we want to do is not fuel up this that's what we want to do so now obviously it fuels up the tractor first uh, but what it's doing right now is it's obviously taking a hell of a lot of money from me and it's actually filling up the tanker as you can see so it's filling up nicely but my bank account is obviously going down. 
It's not cheap stuff fuel, isn't it? Really isn't. That's why it's important that we start making our own. I think. Um, and I think a good way of going about that would be maybe vegetable oil. That is a good way, which we can do. We can use vegetable oil. I'll tell you what I'll quickly do. Is I'll just go and show you again as a reminder if you didn't see the last episode. That if we just hop over from here. And if we go into here. And I have actually started parking my tractors in here. Because I do like these shutters. I think they're pretty cool. And you can like hold them, set them. So the bigger tractors are in there anyway. So yeah, if we go to this, you can see that vegetable oil, uh, or old vegetable oil, which I'm guessing will come from the inn, and then animal fat we can produce into fuel over time. Now, I don't know if you need anything else. I don't know if it costs you anything else. I think it's just a byproduct. But for me to get vegetable oil, uh, obviously I'm going to have to make that, which we might be able to do very soon. Um, we haven't got any sunflowers, uh, but I'll have a look. We'll go over there now quickly and just check what it is. Uh, vegetable oil old must come from the end. Now, I think I might have to sell something in the end, a bit like the animal fat that comes from the butcher. So let's quickly go over to this new place. Um, now, I don't know if it's that man. Is it this man? No, he just likes saying that. There's definitely somewhere where it tells you. Must be here. There you go. So you can take some flowers canola or soybeans and you can get vegetable oil and I'm guessing it processes and that's what that screen is and then this is where it drops back out so straight down there into the tanker that you obviously put underneath it so sunflowers canola and soybeans we don't have any of them so maybe we're gonna have to start planting some of them very soon I'd say very soon Anyway, let's crack on with what we're doing. We keep getting sidetracked, but it has fueled up and it has cost me quite a bit of money. But we can go to the shop now because we need to buy some hoses. We haven't got the right hose on the farm for this. And I also may as well get another longer hose, bigger hose, just in case I ever pick anything up into this uh, tanker that doesn't take the smaller hoses. So let's go and quickly do that. Right, so there we go. I'm hoping that I can store the smaller one. It's massive, that is. I didn't expect it to be that big. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Don't go there. Is there a, way, a place that I can put this on the side? There we go. Now, I'm hoping this one will fit just the same. Maybe on here. Doesn't look like it. Well, I guess I'm going to have to just drag it back. It is what it is. Not ideal, and definitely not pretty. But it'll make do. But I'll probably lose it along the way. Somehow. Right, so we're here. So let's just drop this off, and I'll show you exactly what's going to happen. Now I am going to pump all of this into this one and we'll just use this one to fill up. So that should be fine there. Um, if I back it up to the side of it, it, should, it will be um, okay for me to empty into it. It's quite a long hose that is. There we go. You could obviously open um, I think you can also like trigger into it as well. You don't need to do this, but obviously it's realistic and I like it. So why not? Now, I think... Yep, that's it. We open that. Um, and then obviously we change the direction. So we just open the F1 menu so you can see what I mean. So right now the direction is set to filling because obviously I can change it to emptying. So if I press Z, it's now changed to emptying. And we turn the pump on, you'll notice that this is filling up. And then this here, this little tiny dial, is obviously going down. The details are immense, let's be honest. This is something, pumping fuel into your own, obviously, farm on your fuel tank on the farm. is realistic. A lot of farmers 
they have their own fuel source um, that gets brought to them, they, they buy it in bulk, comes in, gets stored on the farm, um, and yeah, and they have to obviously fuel from that. So now that we've got this with some fuel in, we can, yeah, just keep fueling up as we need it, and then when it runs out, we'll go and get another load. The other one, if you want to know, I'll quickly just show you, if you do want to use both, is just there. And again, it's the same kind of system. There was, before, previously, just to the right of the trailer, that's where it was. So it has been uh, just moved around a little bit. Uh, there isn't one on that bit, but obviously you've got your own if you do want to make it. So probably we will switch over to that because um, I do like the idea of making my own fuel. And you can also sell it. Let's be honest, you could go and sell that. I wonder where you can actually sell the fuel though. That again is another interesting thing. So fuel, you can sell it at the gas station. Makes sense. But it's the biogas purchase. So I'm guessing that must be somewhere about here. Must be a different area on there where you can sell fuel. Right, so let's just check to see if this is done. Yes, it is. Happy days. So it automatically turned off, which is good. So we just need to basically disconnect this. Um, I'll probably as well disconnect the O's because it is quite a long goes and we don't want it just lying about. So if we just drop it there, that'll be fine. So obviously now we've got fuel as and when we need it. And that's that done. Happy days. So the next thing I want to do in this episode is I'm going to go and do a bit more of the straw baling, but I'm not going to actually bail off the other field. I'm just going to go and pick up the actual straw bales that I've uh, already done. I'm going to go store them into, yeah, into somewhere basically. Just probably maybe the, try to think what tractor to use. Uh, let's use the, let's use the class. We may as well. So this is opening. Yeah, I think, because obviously there's no seasons, I don't have to worry about weather. I don't have to worry about them rotting. There is no rush, uh, but I do want to do two fields as loose, show them being stored like that, but then also doing the other two. But I do want to get on to that cornfield as well, so I don't want to linger and do another bale uh, session in that field, because I do want to actually do some uh, corn bales, some corn straw bales in this episode. So. I'm going to have to go and get the correct header for the harvester and then crack on with that. But first, I want to pick up the bales. Mainly because I haven't used one of these in such a long time from the Anderson DLC pack. And I'm actually, yeah, looking forward to it. So let's, um, hook up. Not crashing. No, that's not what I want to do. There we go. Got it in the end. So yeah, I haven't used this in, well, a long time definitely a long time I'm either manually loading or using a full um, auto load so this is going to be interesting but I'm hoping it's straightforward enough which it looks like it it's pretty cool I do like the animations of them though. I mean, these, these are real things as well that you can get on your farm. I mean, you know you've made it as a farmer if you've got one of these. I mean, it holds just about the right amount, I think, as well. It's not too big, um, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't struggle to pull it. You can't obviously pick it up still if you're not perfectly aligned, but you do have to nudge it a little bit. There you go. It does get it in the end. So I'm hoping 
we're at 8, so we just need 50% to 8, so we've got 16 capacity. I'm looking at the map and I'm thinking we might just make it. We've actually got 16. Have I just driven over that? There we go. Yeah, we've actually got 16 bales. How lucky is that? Perfect for what we're trying to do. And there we go, the last one for 16, and then that's every bale from this field picked up. And then what I'll try and do, because we haven't really got much space anyway. Right, so I'm sure that this is the one that stacks it when it stands up tall. And I think if we try to put it under there, it's not going to be a very good idea. Uh, there isn't many spaces over here as well, not enough for this, but what I'm going to have to just do is pretty much load them somewhere just there. So if we put it into unload, what it should do is stand up tall, so we'll just watch it to see what it does. There we go. And now what I'll do is I'll reverse it. I think that'll do. That'll do for now. And then obviously be careful. Probably done this a little bit dodgy. Right, well there we go. We somehow done it. Somehow. I mean, it wasn't pretty, but it's somehow done. And I'm sure we can obviously ping them into there. Some of them will. Let's go park it back up anyway, now that we've used it. I will pick up the second um, lot of bales from this field. I do plan on baling next, but for now, this will do. This will do. I'm probably just not in the trigger, actually. Right, there we go. Um, let's just go and try and pick one of these bales up without, obviously, causing herself any issues. This might not be a good idea. There you go, so it's moving. There you go, it just needed a bit of a nudge. Uh, but now it's full, so you can see that the actual... Um, yeah, cover's gone, which is a nice little touch as well. Uh, so we'll start picking them up as as and when we need them, but at least they're there, and they are 8,000 litres. And, as you've seen, some of them that are in here now must be 8,000 litres. But there's 90 bales in there. 90! And also, as well, that's not it. We've got a lot more straw. You start the map off with pretty much everything that you need, but up there, if you just go over here, you can click it, you've got 87 bales another one that's hay that's insane and I think if you just throw it up or obviously put it up with a fork you can get it so let's have a look so we've got so that's hay up there that's more hay bales nice so there is a lot of hay um, I honestly thought they were straw bales but they're not so we've got round hay and square hay bales there's definitely pretty much everything that you need on this farm already set up to go Right, so let's go and do the the corn. So we're obviously going to have to buy the header attachment for this. So what I'll do now is I'll get all set up and I'll cut back in when I'm in the field ready to go. Right, so I've set up the field and with all the equipment that I need for the corn, but what I quickly just want to try and do is get this breeding bull um, doing his job. So let's go and try and sort this out. Now I think, if I remember, the trigger for this dude is just on that side of the door. If I remember rightly.
There we go. So we'll bring him into here. And then we'll go and back him up to the door, I think it is. Or it's to the pen to the left-hand side. I can't remember now exactly. Obviously, I've never done this before anyway, but you know. I've got a feeling I put him there, where the straw is. It kind of makes sense. The breeding ball is not accepted here. So there we go. So he's obviously doing his thing now. We can turn that off. For some reason I thought that was it, but I don't know what that is then. That is interesting. So, well, I mean, that says everything, doesn't it, really? Let's be honest. Um, yeah, we'll leave into it. I don't really have much else to say on that one. So, obviously, he's now doing the business. What we need. So, we'll leave into it. I mean... I think one of these fills up and you actually see it fill up but it's not actually giving me any information on the animal tab so, so I've got, just got my young balls it's kind of disappeared now hey ho let him just crack on with it so we'll move over now to the um, the corn start harvesting here we go. So I have gone with this header. Now, I don't think it's very compatible with this uh, harvester. It's really good, though, because I've got it in the colour of Deutzwar, but it just, yeah, it moves around like that. So this isn't, yeah, this might be not the best way to go about it, but we'll, uh, we'll have a go and see what happens, eh? I'm sure it'll do the job. What we need, anyway. So look at that texture. That's the uh, corn straw that it is now dropping. Also, if you noticed to the right of me that I came up here with the harvester and also with one of the um, tractors, and you can see the path that I've taken where I've damaged the grass. Let's just move out so you can actually see it. But yeah, taking it down to like maybe is it the first or the second growth stage of the grass? So yeah, that does. Yeah, it's, it looks good. So it's impressive. So this is not the biggest field. But it'll probably take long enough. I might just do a couple of up and down rows here, do a bit of bailing so we can see that, and then you can get yeah an understanding of what I was saying uh, about how good the uh, texture of the corn straw on this map is. Hence why you can't use straw me mod or anything like that because you will have some uh, compatibility issues then. I mean, it kind of blends in quite well with the uh, ground, which you'd expect, because technically it's the stalks. It is the corn stalks. Uh, but you can use it as a straw, so... I do like that. Highly detailed and, uh, yeah, impressive textures, as always, with this map. So what I'll do is I'll just do three rows here, three up and down rows. And then I'll start doing some bales, and I think that'll be a good point. Uh, yeah, to, to end the video. I have done quite a lot. We've obviously done um, the straw bales. I've picked up them. Just done some fuel at the start as well. And also done, well, set the breeding bull up as well, so he'll be doing his thing. Um, but yeah, there is so many, so many other things to do as well. There really is. We spoke about the actual slaughterhouse and all that and how it's going to work with the meat packs. I think we haven't, we haven't even touched the surface yet on this map. There's going to be a lot to see and a lot to experience. I'm excited for it. It's definitely got a lot better than what it was before. And to be honest, even before it was one of the best maps going on FS19. And even on FS17, it was one of the best maps. But I think right now it's probably winning it for me. The amount of things you can do in this map. And also the layout of the map. It's not, it's not, yeah, not a bad layout. It's quite small in comparison to other maps, but... You've only got like the one farm really. And you've got many so many different areas to that farm that you can expand on. And I think anything you can think about putting in this game, I'm sure Farmer Andy could probably do it if he wanted to. It really is one uh, excellent modder. 
So I think that'll do for what we're trying to do here. So I'll fold that up. Obviously we'll continue this on at some point properly, maybe in the next episode. In fact, we'll definitely do it in the next episode because, uh, yeah, it makes more sense. Uh, let me just clear out this baler. There we go. We'll be doing some proper scanning at some point. So let's unfold the baler. What are we sitting at for bales? Wrong one, F1. 4,000. Let's put it up to six. And let's crack on with it and do some bales so we can actually see them in action. Definitely an impressive bale. I remember when I first saw this uh, and I thought it's just the most realistic bale that you could probably see um, in FS19 for me personally. I mean, um, FS22 is, let's be honest, it's probably going to add different types of bales. Maze Plus and all that stuff, what that's brought to the game. I'm hoping that a lot of that is implemented. I really am. Because it will, it just makes sense to do it. But look at that for a texture on a bale. Seriously. You can't deny that that is immense. Off Bergman really does take it to another level. It really does. So we'll do one more, and then uh, I think that'll be enough for what we want to do. I forget that I'm in the fast bail and that I don't have to stop. So we're nearly there. There we go. So there we go. So I'll turn the baler off. Turn the tractor off as well. And we'll have a look at it. I mean, look at that. Looks good. Really does. Look highly detailed. So that's your corn straw. So you can obviously use that as bedding. Uh, pretty much like any other straw. You can sell it. And you can also have the placeable that I put down for storing it. So definitely a nice touch to the map. Um, and th these were in the game, in this map, well before Straw Me came along. So it has been something that's been available to do on Hoff Bowman for quite a while now. So on that note, I'm going to leave the video there. As always, thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. That really does help my channel out. And if you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one on Farming Simulator. See ya.